joining me for Making It Monday and this is our project B4 it's before lunch before break no just B4 I'll stop with the jokes um it's called Magnolia because of course the month of January is all about uh, new beginnings uh, thinking of spring flowers hopefully we're going to get some daffodils fairly shortly I actually bought some today and uh they're, they're, they're slowly coming out. Honestly, as soon as you put them into water, they slowly, slowly come out. Um, it's really super. Um, thank you for everybody for watching. Hi to Jill and Gemma and Caroline. And I know Abigail's watching as well. Hello, Kath. I hope you're having a lovely time with all your girls. Um, and to Lynn and to Bridget and Rachel as well. There's going to be lots of people joining, so I'm not going to be able to say everybody's name. Hi, Denise and Melba. So lovely to have your company and to Jill and to Diana um, and to Diane I'm sorry um, yeah so welcome everybody it's just lovely to be here again on a Monday uh, showing you the latest making it Monday project which uh, we've all come to uh, we wait for, in great anticipation for and um, this one's particularly special because I may not you, you may not think it's special but it is because somebody somewhere and I can't remember who and if you do come on to the live um hi Jackie um then tell me if it was you because somebody asked about a decorative zip and we have got one project that uses that which is the um a little purse blowed if I can remember the name of it we've, we've got so many now um but we did do a little purse with the the lovely decorative zip in it's only a tiny little project so i thought i'd go large <laughs> so this is the uh, hi jackie the, the other jackie uh this is the one that i came up with it's got a lovely back pocket so this is the one in the pattern the actual pattern front looks slightly different because i obviously i made a second one and now i'm going to make a third one um but the, the great thing is that we've used um, the whole zip so oftentimes with decorative zips you have to buy them in a bundle basically I, I, I'm sure you must be able to buy them singularly but that has never happened to me I always seem to buy about 20 at a time and then you're like what can I do with these zips so um, and they're quite long they're about sort of 17 18 inches long some of them I know there's different ones but the ones I got were about that about that length and um, Funnily enough, when I looked in my uh, zip stash um, a couple of days back, looking for a decorative, decorative zip, a lot of them had the zip ends cut off and obviously just the, the ring pulls had been used and um, <clears throat> we needed to have a, a separate zip slider. And I thought, well, really, that's no good, is it? It's OK, because I get I have got lots of um, zip sliders spare. But um, it's it's good to use up everything, isn't it? And some of those colours I had were, were going to be perfect, but there we are, couldn't use them. So I came up with this idea. We've done something similar like this before, but we haven't done one with a little back pocket, which is really nice, and uses up that little bit of extra zippage that we might have. Um, and, of course, it's quite fun if you put a different coloured slider on here as well. So we've got the back little back pocket in there. And obviously we've got this lovely, it's an eight and a half inch square thereabouts um, pouch. And it's all been bound. The, the second one I did, um, which is, sorry, there, <laughs> which is the main picture on the pattern. I just zigzagged that. And actually it looks really nice. I can fold it inside out if you like so you can see. But um, it, it's really neat. Um, so, you know, I know perhaps this is, we're not in craft fair season again. Maybe in the spring we'll start getting craft fairs again. But um, if you were to put that on your stall, um, you know, it's, it's a nice, neat, it's nice, nice, neat inside and outside. I've turned that through and I've got to turn it back again. Um, so really, that's what it's about. And it's just it, it's also learning new things isn't it it's trying things out so if you've never stitched with a decorative zip this is probably one way of doing it. there's probably a gazillion other ways um but you know i thought like make any other making it monday project it's, it's good to keep them simple so 
I'm, you know I'm not going to get this um, turned out very well at all. <laughs> My corners are going to be rubbish, but I'm sure you'll forgive me. So this is Magnolia and it's lovely. It's got nice uh, wadding in there to make it nice and soft. And I, I did say in the pattern you could use um, put your rotary blades in here in their covers <laughs> in here and maybe just use this for your rotary cutters so you know if you see that pouch I must admit I have certain pouches and obviously I'm not going to be able to reach any of them I have certain pouches for certain sewing machines um, and all the bits and pieces go into that particular bag um, so you could easily have a bag for rotary cutters as well so basically that's what I was thinking so I hope you like it um, so oh hello we've got um, Georgie from Hungary hi there Hope you're all well over that way. I bet it's a bit cold, actually. Um, Hazel, excuse me, <coughs> excuse me. Hazel says um, she has some of those zips. So um, maybe maybe you should dig them out. We, yes, you should, Hazel. So we'll we'll start getting on this. I'm I'm fiddling and faffing around with this. I'll just get rid of it in a sec. <laughs> Gone. Um, so we best get started. I'll just pop my phone out the way. Um, what's that look? What does this say? Abigail says, does anyone want to adopt three kids asking for a friend? No, I'm a bit busy. Uh, speaking for um, possibly a grandma of a friend. Anyway, let's go to the overhead. <laughs> so I'm going to use this gorgeous, gorgeous fabric. And I must admit, I did, I did toy with the idea of using this yesterday, but instead I, I used the other fabric that you've seen. But what I will do is I'm going to use one of Adrienne's little... Um, panels I've cut this down Adrienne's panels are about um, six for six um, some of her um, she had a sale recently where they were off cuts and they're all sort of different sizes so this is cut to the size that's that's stated in the pattern and I think it actually complements quite nicely I was looking because I've got all her animal ones and I was looking for that for those and I have no idea where they are <laughs> no idea I've searched my room high and low they're around here somewhere I suppose I need a tidy up so um the first thing we're going to do if I look at my pattern I'm going to move my zip out of the way I'm going I've chosen a complementary zip slider for when we come to cut this so um hopefully we don't have any fun and games putting that on we're usually okay so gorgeous gorgeous fabric this came from Adri um, Abigail ages ago underneath is the lining which is <laughs> African wax fabric which I totally adore I mean fancy opening your pouch and seeing that <sighs> wouldn't that just cheer you up <laughs> it would me not that we need cheering up but you know what I'm saying all right so let's just fold these bits and pieces out of the way we're going to concentrate on our little pocket so the first thing you're going to do is put right sides together I've got a little bit of Wiltshire Liberty here I've got a funny feeling this is oyster but I might be wrong I can never remember names of anything um, just make sure you got right sides together also if you're using a, a like one of Adrian's panels for instance make sure you stitch it at the right end so you're going to stitch it at the top end where the zip's going to go so this is the bottom that's the top um, I did make that fatal error yesterday of stitching on the wrong um, the wrong end in fact I've stitched the side and uh, I had to un unpick it so pin it together we're going to stitch right across here and we'll give it a little press I'll switch my iron on so we're ready I've just I'm just waiting for my um, my five by seven mat from Abigail I've still only got my little one this is tiny what's, what's this one uh, six by four six by four but I need just that little bit more so mm, I should be waiting I should be waiting so um, let's take it to the machine and get this stitched um, so I'm on quite close up view today because we're doing a little bit of zippage so I, I, I want you to see I might switch my other light on as well so it's a little bit um, brighter just wait for the the, the cameras have to settle sometimes um, and I don't often give them time to settle um, there we go it's a bit better right so we're going to stitch across that top um, regular stitch length and a quarter inch seam allowance I'm not going to worry too much about that and just go straight across you can um, 
Cut your threads if you want to. I know where you live, Abigail. It's just a matter of time. Oh, I have no time. Um, and then what we're going to do is open it up and press. So we'll get that done. Let me just um, move my machine and uh, switch you back on the overhead again. Um, yeah, I really should pop across and get it because I think she's got some other goodies for me as well. So <clears throat> now, really seriously, having done lots and lots of patchwork over the last few days, uh, it's top secret projects, um, you, you do it does benefit from setting a seam when you especially when you want to get a nice um, crisp finish um, <laughs> I'm sorry the smallest ironing mat but it does its job actually it's really good I do like it and I bet all those ladies that got the five by seven from Abigail I bet th this that's the one that you're going to use a lot of I must admit it's um I don't know what I've done with it it's, it's around somewhere unless I've left it at a workshop or something like that, possibly. I am prone to leaving things behind. I've lost scissors and all sorts. Best quality Karen Buckley ones as well. Anyway, so there is my little pocket, which is super duper. But of course, now we need to put a bit of zippage on it. Now you have got the measurements for each section of this. Um, so go by that or you could just um, be a bit gung-ho and cut we don't want that metal end you'll see why in a minute so cut your metal end off don't need it um, I don't like them anyway they must admit they frighten me in case I get my needle jammed in them and we want to cut it so it's just a wee bit longer than our little pocket there let's just move that up so you can see um, and that's plenty long enough what's left. I know you can't see because I'm close in, but it, it's plenty long enough to go across the pouch. And if you're at all worried um, about the residue, which is that, then obviously you're going to measure it and you're going to measure it to what it says on the pattern and you'll be fine. Honestly, trust me. Um, so I'm just going to cut it across now um these are nylon zips. They're not metal zips. So using your um, best scissors, isn't too bad um, if you've got the Karen K Buckley serrated scissors these are absolutely first rate these are my second best and then I've got two other pairs as well they're all fantastic but these are super because they will go through anything so what we need to do is obviously put our zip slider on and we've all got different ways of doing it. My goodness me, I get so many messages afterwards about all the different ways everybody puts their zip pulls on. But this is how I do it. So do it, do it your way and I'll do it my way and then we're all happy. And this is, this is something I was taught, oh my gosh, years and years ago. I can't say, you know, a hundred years ago. So um, there we go. So I've just clipped off the end of one side which is the right side on this case the zip is right side facing me uh, oh Susan says she's lost her glasses so struggling to see oh my goodness me um, if we were to put that zip slider on with the metal end attached I would say it's highly unlikely that it would be accurate when it's got when your zip slider is pulled down to here um, try it try it I try it try it try it but um, you know here speaks the voice of experience so you're putting the fat end of your zip slider the one with the big hole onto the end of your zip and obviously you want the same size so these decorative zips I've got a three mil and the zip sliders are three mil as well so they all they all work and they, it just slips on basically it just slips on now you don't want to pull it too far down you can see how far I've got it because what I want you to do is when you put this side in you want enough to be able to grab but also you want it so it's not so f so with that when that threads through you want both top edges to be fairly parallel to each other it's only because then your zip stays fairly accurate so push that in get hold of both ends and then give it a pull and that should be fine okay it's nothing there's no magic trick to that that just works um keep keep having a try if it if you don't succeed look you've just seen me do it it's perfectly fine doing it this way you have to practice 
did you practice driving your car before you actually got on the road or you know had your license yes you did so you just need to practice putting on a zip slider um, and then we can tidy the end up a little bit if you want to just so it's uh, aesthetically pleasing okay so what we're going to do we're going to change to our zipper foot to be able to stitch this on now very very seriously what I don't want you to do is take it right up to the edge right up to the center there of where your zip teeth are okay because your zip slider will get caught in the fabric so bring it back now do you see on my particular zip we've got these little flowers I would say you just want to see your fabric through that top two little flowers I know I know I know it's ridiculous but there we are so <laughs> so I'm just going to pop it over the top and I can just see it and I'm hoping you can as well and I want you to put a pin do not use quilters tape why do you think that's the case why do you think because you've got a lacy zip and the quilters tape will be remain sticky through those holes and you'll also see the shine so do not use quilters tape and I know some of you really love it and I can understand why but this is probably the one instance where I'll say don't use it okay use your pins um, if you can get a clip in there use a clip um, but basically just just pin it so it stays put and there you've got a lovely neat job so all we're going to do is put our zipper foot on and we're going to stitch through the center do you see in the little flower probably best to see it there do you see that center hole that one okay we're going to stitch through there on that side okay so not complicated it's just things that it's just good to know nice tips thank you mary thank you I try my best. <laughs> well, you know what? I'll tell you what it is. Um, tips are always learned by somebody to give out if they've made those mistakes themselves. And then it becomes a tip, doesn't it? Because, um, because you can tell people that this is what I did wrong, so please don't do it wrong yourselves. Right, so I'm going to put my zipper foot on. And I've done it so it's on the right-hand side can you see the needle is on the right hand side of my zipper foot so I can get quite close to my zipper teeth without getting myself into trouble so oh, I'm going to take my pins out because you know I can't cope with pins um, but obviously you know do your best do your best I've got stitch length regular stitch length of well i would put it on 2.6 to be honest but um, 2.4 is good Okay, so uh, I'm just going to run across there. And as I come to my pin, I'm going to pull it out. And I'm going to leave my needle in. My foot automatically comes up on this machine. And I want to put my zip slider up this way, over here, out the way. Now, the best way to do that is to actually, and it's better if the if the needle is on the other side is to actually turn your work sideways okay sideways like that it's much easier let me um let me think what i'm doing there <laughs> turn it sideways i'm thinking do i yes you do um it's much easier to get get past your zip slider and i have to say my um my feed dogs on this machine sit really proud really proud I struggle with all sorts. Anyway, I've moved it now. It catches on wadding and all sorts. Anyway, there's my zip slider out of the way. <laughs> so assuming you've got it still pinned here, you should still have that nice and straight. You're nowhere near the teeth of your zip, so nothing is gonna happen other than a nice little bit of straight stitch. So there we are, let's move it that way a little bit. So if I was to um, close that now, we've got a lovely pocket. Well, the start of a pocket. Um, we just need to tidy our ends up and start putting that onto the actual pouch itself. So let's have a look at the overhead. Let's do that. So here we go. And so I'm just gonna get my scissors and I'm just going to 
trim that away. Now, don't forget that which depends on maybe you, you're right handed, you're left handed. Think about where your slider is because this is the opposite to what I did in the bag, in the other, the first bag. Where is it? Let me show you. So this one has the zip slider here and for a right handed person, actually that's quite good. Um, the zip slider is the opposite side. So although, I mean, obviously I can use my left hand perfectly fine. Um, you might want to think about how your zip slider is sitting. Okay. So we need to find the middle of our pocket. I hope you're all keeping up. Oh, Chris says, I learned not to be afraid of zips from Lizzie. Now I'm confident. Oh, Chris, that just makes my day. So find the centre and give yourself a nice visual. OK, and then you want to find the centre of your outer piece. So we'll just fold it in half. Now, I've already got my 640 on here. So I hope you've done the same if you're stitching along. It's always good to do some little bit of prep work. And you can give it a um, finger crease, but you could always get your pen in there as well. There we go. Let's see, I've got a nice dark mark there so you can see it. <clears throat> and we're gonna line up those notches. You, they, you, on the pattern, there's a picture that shows you this with a ring. But you're going to bring it down so you've got raw edges together and you're going to pin you can use clips on this bottom edge but that's the only place where you can use um, clips and so we'll just turn that around isn't that pretty fabric that brighten up your day lovely because we've got a few layers you might want to put your um, What's it called? Quilting foot. <laughs> okay, so that there's our pocket positioned. Okay, so now um, you will need to stitch the other side because at the moment you've got a pocket, but it's not attached to anything. You've got a zip on it, but again, you might as well not have a zip on it because it's you know you could get your hand in there. So we need to actually attach this. So because we've pinned it nicely, all we're going to do now is stitch right across there. And, and apply it to our, our background so it's um, nice and secure. So let's get the machine in. Sorry, just get my hand in the way the whole time. Um, I'm keeping my zipper foot on, but I'm going to change it over. So it's on the other side. So now it's on the um, left hand side. And I'm just gonna pick it up. There we go. So yours should do something similar. Uh, oh, Hazel said, I would like a tank out of that fabric. Do you mean like um like a little little t-shirt type top? Like a tank I was gonna say tank top, but that's not yeah. Right, so all I'm going to do now is stitch down the other side. Okay. And um secure the top of that zip. I'm using the edge of my zipper foot. Let me get my pokey tool. See the edge of my zipper foot here? is sitting uh, next to the teeth of my zip. So it's gonna follow the teeth all the way along. So nothing complicated. And again, we're gonna get so far, and then I'm going to move um, my slider. And this time we're going to take it on an angle again. There we go, much better that way. There we go. And make sure that, and I'm going to use my stiletto Make sure that your ends of your zips, or the end of both halves, sit very snugly together. Okay, so you want you might want to hold that down. There we go. No need to back stitch because we're going to sort that out in a minute. Oh, Hazel said yes. So it's like a like a, a t-shirt type thing. Okay, so um, I'm going to change to my regular foot now. So let's we'll just drop that one off and get this one in because we're just going to do some regular stitching now. So just get my thread out of the way. And what we will do is just stitch around the pocket just to secure it and then we don't have to worry about it. We've got the pins in 
Um, I'm just going to get my stiletto in there just to make my zip stay put. Just don't put the metal anywhere near your needles. Coming up a little bit a little off piece there. And you just literally, I mean, eighth of an inch, eighth of an inch. I'm inclined to move the camera a little bit. That's a bit better, isn't it? I can, that's fine, that's a bit better. Um, and if you've got a walking foot, which I have attached to my machine, even feed foot, that sort of thing, um, then you do use it. Because we're using lots of layers, so it's good to, to use it if you can. So about an eighth of an inch. Um, you know, none of this is going to be seen, so just relax with it. It's the only time when you can just have a sort of not a care in the world, just to make sure we don't get anywhere near that zip slider. And if you think you might catch the edge of your zip, then use your pokey tool, whatever you've got, your stiletto, to hold that in place. So there we are. That's our pocket attached. Okay. So now it's just a case of doing the, um, oh, hold on. We're just doing the um, uh, fold overs. Hold on a sec. I've just my, my technology is playing up. There we go. Trouble is I don't have enough room. I've got a massive desk, not enough room. Okay, so there's our pocket attached. Now the next thing, um, and it says in the pattern what you're going to do, you're going to fold over either side of this. Now, um, I don't want you to go crazy. Okay, I don't want you to go crazy. It's about a half an inch. I, can't, I must admit, it, I, haven't, I didn't measure it, but it's about a half an inch. <clears throat> and all you're going to do is literally grab hold of your fabric and you want to just fold it over your raw edge, okay? You do, it doesn't need to be by a huge amount, as long as you cover your stitching. That's all you want to do, okay? So I'm gonna pin that, because that was just lovely just there. And I'm gonna pin that there as well. So it's about a half an inch. Look, you, it's just going to take the width of your pouch down by a little bit if you go more than that. But there's no need to go any more than that. OK, it's just a case of um, having nimble fingers, I suppose. And if you want to press it, press it. But when you do press it, make sure that your um, that your edge, when you look at it and bring it up, try and get that as straight as you can. And I have to say, it's not that easy. Um, to get absolutely super duper straight um, and do what I'm doing, oh, wrong pin, do what I'm doing, put lots of pins in and uh, get it so it's nice and straight. That's not bad. I can accept that. So we're going to do the same the other side. Um, pa um, Patsy said, how clever. Well, Patsy, you know what? I was thinking about this. I wanted to do binding for the inside to make it really super duper neat and I thought about the fact that we could do binding well first of all we could have turned our pocket over and and did and, you know fold it under but we have the zip to contend with and I thought that's never going to lie flat we could have put zip tabs on mm, yeah that maybe would lie flat I don't think you would get that neater finish and then I thought about binding along here, like you would do with a, um, like a webbing on a bag. I thought, nah, nah, that's too heavy. <laughs> it's too obvious, Great, two great big strips. So I thought, well, this is the obvious solution. Yes, you still get the seam, but, but really you hardly notice it. Um, and yeah, yeah, I just thought that was a good idea. So there we are. So that how, that's how that was born. I think I'm going a bit wonky here. So I'm going to put a pin in and I'm going to look at it from a different angle. I'm going to look at it from there. So I'm happy with that. Because once this is stitched, you, well, you can undo it, but wouldn't that be a faff? You just want to get it right first time if you can. So let's, that's not bad. 
well, I'm, you know, moderately happy with that. And of course, like I say, you can just, you can pop it under your iron and you could give that a press. Okay, so you've got a lovely creased line that you can follow or you can just kind of go for it. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, and this technique with um, the uh, folds, you know, the pleats going over, you can do that with all sorts of things. You know, if you're dressmaking, oops, if you're bag making, there's lots of different, oh, sorry, there's lots of different times when you can use this technique for um, hiding a raw edge, basically. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to stitch it down there. Um, it's not a structural stitch as such, so you could, if you wanted to, increase your stitch length. That's it, I didn't think that was going to grab. So be brave and just go for it. Now I've got my pin heads, sorry, my, got my pin heads going the wrong way, so it's not helpful. So let's just take those out, I'm going to hold that. And if anything, this bit of top stitching will be seen. So try and get it nice and as neat as you can possibly get. Okay, one bit done. And so, hold on, let me show you. So that's, that's not too bad, is it? Not too bad. And then we'll come down the other side, so we might as well do it from there. So just try and get that and pulling it sometimes will straighten things up. You know, if I was to take that out, that might pull that a bit straighter. So just be confident. So just top stitch. And you're securing. And don't worry about your wadding. Your wadding underneath will do what it wants to do. If you stuck it well, it'll it should pleat as well. But I'm obviously you know that's going to be down to you and it's how much ironing you've done to press it so there we are not too bad not too bad so the next thing is uh sorry let's just get you moved is um to attach the um lining okay to attach the lining so um I could do with moving that out just a wee bit really but well we'll leave it as it is now the lining, and I said this in the pattern, I've, I've asked you to cut the lining the same length as this outer piece. Now, because we've done the pleats, depending on how much you have folded over will depend on your finished length. So by me saying cut the same length as your outer, we're now going to trim to size because it does really depend on your pleats. So put your right sides together I mean, it's hardly noticeable with this um, African wax, but trust me, that's the, the right side is together. Just pin this end here so you've got that nice and secure. Then we're just going to take it up to the other end and flip it over. And I was going to say it's about two inches you're taking off, so which is about right. Uh, Hazel says the bit above the zip would look nice cross cross hatched quilted yes it would yes it would hazel yeah you see this oops this is where your imagination has suddenly taken over because that's exactly the sort of thing that you could do so let's flip, flip it round i do like my pin heads to stick out of the edge okay so what we're going to do now is i've got my two short ends pinned i'm sorry i'm a bit zoomed in tonight and we're going to stitch these two short ends, okay? And then we'll give it a press. And I might zoom out a little bit. It depends on how much I can get on my on my mat as to how much, if we zoom or not. <laughs> so <clears throat> let's go to the machine. So we just got our regular foot on there still. We're going to do about a quarter of an inch seam allowance. It's not, none of this is crucial. Um, I'm just going to do a little back stitch there. You know, if you do three eighths of an inch, it's just going to make your pouch just that little bit smaller. Nothing, nothing, you know, too worrying. I think I've caught my fabric under there. 
Hold on a sec. I'm just going to look because I don't think I caught it. There, look at that. See? I haven't quite caught it, do you see? So I'm going to stitch from the quilted side. <laughs> the, the, the wooded, wooded side? Because I know that's accurate. Okay. Let's give that another go. All the way along. <clears throat> As I like to say, it doesn't hardly make a jot of difference um, about uh, your seam allowance. It really doesn't. So there we are. So there's our quarter inch. So now I'm going to do the other side. Foot down, a little bit of a back stitch. Just take those pins out. You know I hate pins. I don't know why I use them, but they're really good. <laughs> Especially because they're Taylor, Taylor Seville as well. They really are excellent pins. Can't praise them enough. Okay. So let's uh, get this now ironed. I can help reorder Ooh. everyday items, Ooh. track your deliveries, add to your shopping Thank list, you. or answer product questions. To Alexa, get started, just quiet. Why did Alexa start telling me things? <laughs> she told me I could order my shopping for me. How marvellous. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to zoom this out a wee bit. So, bear with. There we are, that's a bit better. Gosh, I was a bit close. All right, I'm going to just switch my iron on. Sorry, I've just gone silent because I was just reading a little little note there. Jean says she says, love this, Lizzie. Oh, thank you, Jean. I haven't seen you for ages, actually. Well, I haven't heard from you for ages, I should say. So there's our short ends stitch. I know this lining is wacky. I love it. And if you want to, you could set the seam, but you've got that polyester wadding, so I recommend you never put an iron anywhere near polyester. Um, oh, there's Millie pinching stuff again. She's been really naughty lately. She just she goes around the house looking for stuff to uh, to pinch. Yeah. Uh, there's nothing here for you, Millie. <laughs> Honestly, she'd she'd have anything, fabric, pattern pieces, essential stuff. She's now sitting on my feet. This could be interesting. <laughs> right, so we've ironed those two edges. Now it's important to iron them. It's important to get that lovely um, flat edge because this the next bit is to put the, um, the, uh, the, the zip in. So I'll just move my iron out of the way. Now if you remember from ages ago, we um, put, we cut our zip. Millie, I wish you wouldn't be under my feet. Thank you. And you'll see now that you've got plenty of room for the zip. Now then, in the pattern I do say, and if hopefully this doesn't complicate things for you, is whichever end you have the zip in. So for instance, um, let's just fold this in half. This is your back, this is your back, this is your front. So you might want it that your zip comes down from the top like that. Slide that down, flip it over, you've got your pocket on the back. So think about that. Okay, so that's how we'll keep it. So I'm going to keep my, I'm going to put my finger on there, hold my zip, <laughs> and um, I'm just going to make sure that that's going to be atta attached that side. So you, obviously you want the decorative part of the zip showing. So I'm just going to pin that just so I know that I've got it in the right place. Because you know what, we'll, we could easily be distracted. Now this is the end that's important because really what I would like is for this end to be at least an inch longer than you need, okay? Because when we come to stitch the other side of this zip, we, it's difficult unless you've got a little bit of leverage and you can open this right up. We're gonna put a clip on the end of that and in the pattern it ju you can just about see my clip if you look carefully, you know what you're looking for. Um, and that will keep your zip apart well enough for you to stitch the other side. So it's quite important, but we'll leave it on there just for the moment. So we're going to do exactly the same as what we did before. 
we're going to stitch our zip on so it's literally so you can just literally see it through that one that these holes here so where my fingernail is there so you can just see the edge of the fabric there okay if you if you can see all of the fabric you're in danger of getting your um, zip slider caught up in the fabric as you pull down so you want it back a bit I mean by all means take it further as long as you know um, that you've got to stitch that, so you've got to have it so you can um, so you can attach it easily. That's what I'm trying to say. But I like to do it so I can just see the edge of my fabric on those inside, those two little holes there. It's, it's quite interesting doing a decorative zip because there are kind of like a few rules, really. So we'll just go to the um, side camera and... Um, start putting that zip on so obviously we need to change it again so I need to take my my feed off my dual feed and I'm going to stitch with my needle to the right so it's on the right side of my zip um, foot and then we're just going to start and come down the side of the zip. So I'm just going to take my pin out now obviously you can pin don't use quilters tape do not use quilters tape and keep the metal so if you still got the metal of your zip attached if I, if I just get this on my machine and then I can show you so on your zip possibly you'll have this metal piece still now you can take that off if you want to you can actually get your pliers on that and and take it off um, but you don't want that anywhere near your seam allowance. So you really want to sort of take it back and start stitching where my, my fingernail is. So you want to take it right back almost a half an inch, okay? Because you really, really don't want that anywhere near your needle. You will, well, you'll break your needle basically. So we're going to come down the side of that zip. I'm going to try and do it so you can see. and just follow the, the, the holes basically, that's your guide. I think Millie's been taken downstairs. <laughs> oh dear. Hello from Missouri. I don't know who, is that Gemma? Would it be Gemma? G-M-A. Right, so look, let me just hold it so you can see it. So there is one half of our zip done. Okay, and you can see where the metal is. It's quite a way away. Well, I should imagine it's a half an inch, centimetre, something like that. So we've attached this, this half. So now we need to do the other half. And I'm going to show you um, what, what I do. Like I say, it's, um, you need it to be secure and you need to give yourself some room. Okay. So I'm going to take it all the way down, so don't be alarmed. I'm going to get um, a clip. You could actually stitch this if you want to, okay? You could stitch it. You could even put a blob of glue on it. Anything so you've got something to stop your zip slider from pinging off because we're going to take it right as far as we can go, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to bring our piece round, so we know that those two edges are going to be stitched together okay like that and we're going to make sure that our zip is sitting absolutely perfectly so line it all up line your fabric up and line your your zip up so it's all beautiful and pop a pin in to hold it okay again that's just a rough a rough pinning okay I haven't done it accurately all I've done is made sure that my zip is equal all the way down it's really important that we do that and then what we're going to do is you're going to turn the whole thing so it, it might look really strange now but you're going to turn the whole thing like this 
and when it comes to your machine I'm going to try and do it so you can see when it comes to stitching this will now lie flat because you've got the clip there do you see and that's giving you the leverage that you need to be able to stitch that down this other side don't worry about what's going on over here okay we know it's correct because there's our pin we know our zip slider is safe because we've either stitched it glued it clipped it whatever but we've given ourselves that inch we couldn't have done that unless we had that inch okay and so now all we've got to do is stitch down the other side the pin is our guide because that means we know it's absolutely accurate where um where we've got it so we've got nothing to worry about oh sorry let's just put you on the uh, the right view <clears throat> okay so let's pop it under the machine so it's it was just a little bit complicated that bit but i think if you look at the picture on the pattern and you just follow me there then it's absolute child's play now when you put your foot down you might find that it your clip is very close to it i would be very careful about the hardware of your zip can you see it's there just get it out of the way and we've it's perfect look it's lined up we've got the pin there all is good in the world so we can take the pin out now because I've put my needle in and my needle now is my anchor point. So don't forget, the same rule applies, let's just do a little bit, is that you just want to see the top edge of your fabric on the top two flowers. If I was to hold that up, oh, that's perfect. Uh, those are the top two flowers, those there, right near the teeth. So that's what you want to line your... Um, your folded your seam your seamed fabric up with and to be honest even if your stitching is really wonky you're absolutely not going to see it with this zip <laughs> that's the great thing about a decorative zip you really unless you use you know a completely contrasting thread you can't see the stitches it's lovely right so our zip has now been installed beautifully. Hold on, let's get a picture. And there we go. So our clip is still in place, okay? So we can draw that up a little bit and you can see that my fabric is lined up really well. We can get rid of the clip now. And you can stitch over that. I can't remember if I did that in the video or not. I really can't, not in the video, in the pattern or not. Um, but certainly you can you can trim it if you want to. Well, stitch, then trim. Trim this side, and as long as your metal is out of the way, then all is safe. All is safe. So that is the main body done. And as we said before, if I look at it like that, then I'm going to pull down, lovely, can get into all my goodies and my zip pocket is on the back perfectly. So now all we've got to do are these sides here. Now, um, this is where you can use binding or you can zigzag, okay? I don't really mind which one you do. Uh, both are equally as neat. In fact, let me show you the inside of this one. This is the one I did the zigzag on and have a look okay so that's that's a really neat finish as well okay so you can do binding or you can do zigzag sometimes it's nice to do something that you're not comfortable with because then you get more confidence okay now we need to get that zip right in the center now if you've been really good and you haven't ironed though your mark is still there so put your zip directly over your mark and there we are so now you're this is where you could probably do with some clips because you've got lots of layers so let me just get my clip bowl you know when i say my clip bowl let me just show you what my clip bowl looks like really <laughs> really why what do i want a brass ring for i don't know that's now that's from my laptop that's broke off all sorts of rubbish my sasha tool because i use that a lot 
and I use my binding tool as well yeah I think everybody's the same the one thing you've got to do is make sure that your fabric is sitting beautifully flat inside okay so you really really want to get your hands in there and we're just going to clip that and I'm going to see if it's straight so you need to get your hands in there or a tool so um, like a, if you've got a, like a, a, a turning tool like this get it in there and pull that fabric out and really get it flat inside and I always find it better to get a tool like this and pull it out so that's all look at that it's lying beautifully now now if you want to round the corners off I did talk about this this morning on my live on my website um, you, you can do that at this stage and all you're going to do is just literally curve round just treat it as if it was this was seamed and curve it around get a lid of something I'm pretty happy with that being central actually I think I'm okay with that um, let's just pop that clip in there so it holds um, yeah so just just literally draw a curve around here be brave try it with a bit of scrap fabric first just to make sure you're happy with what you've done get your finger in there um, get a tool in there just to get that fabric absolutely flat and as you're stitching it do do that again repeat that again I'll probably do it with my stiletto I'll be honest so there we are so we're going to stitch across here and across here and then we're going to trim and then we're going to put some binding on I've actually treated myself to a new needle so um, we're going to do some binding some of you may not have done that before so zipper foot off regular foot on there we go and we're now going to stitch down both sides so quarter inch seam allowance pop it under the machine again don't worry about your seam allowances if um get the right button <laughs> i'm switching my machine off there um, yeah don't worry about your seam allowances too much um, just um, you know even if they're five eighths of an inch that sort of thing that it'll be fine honestly I'm just making sure my fabric is sitting beautifully flat now don't forget you've got quite a few layers I'm stitching over the bottom of my pocket now and my zip as well so we've got quite a few layers going on just helping it under the machine there so when we come to this other half I'm going to get my stiletto in there in the inside and I'm going to pull that fabric on the inside so it's laying flat and as I come up to it take my stiletto out and just back stitch nicely oh somebody says zip well opening the zip well with this zip I'll be honest with you with this zip you just literally can slide it like that so thank you for that though Wendy yeah I was fully confident with my zip there but yes don't forget to open your zip it's like everything isn't it we have to remember all these different things so again down the other side just keep an eye on all your layers keep an eye and make sure your zip stays together nicely as we come past the zip get your pokey tool in between your layers I'm on the I'm on the I'm working on the um, outer fabric now and I'm just bringing that fabric along so it's laying nice and flat and back stitch there we are Susan says, need to source some, never attempted a zip yet. Oh, Susan, they're, zips are really easy, I'll be honest with you. I think it's just, I don't know why, they've got a bit of a rep, haven't they? They've got a bit of a rep of being um, difficult, and really they're not. As long as you use, I mean, as, you don't actually have to use a zipper foot, but um, it, does, it, does, it does help to use a zipper foot. Um... And, and basically just take your time the zipper foot is designed 
not to sort of jump over the teeth. I think that's some people's nightmares are that they think they're going to break the needle on the teeth. Well, first of all, the, the, the zip teeth these days are nylon. They're not necessarily metal anymore, not, not generally. And so they're user friendly already because they're nylon. So we can cut with, with our scissors and things like that. We can stitch over them because they're, they're nylon. If you had a metal zip, oftentimes you jump over the, the zip teeth because they're metal. You don't want to break your needle. Sometimes you can feed the needle in the teeth. You can do that. But um, gen generally speaking, you, you would jump over, which, you know, it's not, not, not that beneficial. Right, so um, there we are. So we've trimmed back so it's nice and neat. And we're going to put some binding on. So with the binding, let's get the end that's not pressed. Um, difficult to see, I thought, in the photo, but um, it's only so much I can do for a Making It Monday project, I'll be honest with you. So you're going to lay it like that. So this is my, it is actually bias binding. It's got a bit stretched to it. You're going to lay the whole piece over the top like that. OK, so so this edge is actually sitting pretty much on my stitch line. OK, and you're going to fold this under so it goes over the top of your end. You're going to fold it under about a half an inch. Give yourself a little bit of room and you're going to stitch it. You're going to top stitch it like that. So if we look at the other side, if I try and hold it. It looks like that. OK, the other side looks like that. It's folded over. So and, and, I, and to be honest, I wouldn't worry about what side you do. You're, going, you're just going to be grateful that you've stitched it on. And if you wanted to, you could put a pin in there. You can put a clip in there to hold it. Um, but you're going to start stitching straight away. So, um, gosh, maybe you could pin this just to hold it in place. But I pretty much would just go with it as it is. So we're going to start stitching, um, not quite at the end, just come in a little bit, OK, because you've got quite a bit of bulk there. So we want to sort of uh, help ourselves by starting maybe, um, you know, like a stitch length, um, a, a stitch length away from from the fold. So this is the this is a tricky bit. I'm not going to deny it, but you want to try and keep that folded edge underneath there. Uh, when you when you start stitching, you're going to stitch it again, so you will catch it. But uh, sorry, my hands are going to be in the way for a moment. But just trust yourself and try your best. OK, if you don't try your best, you'll never try at all. And that would be a shame. So I've got it just on the edge there. I didn't start right on the edge. I came back a, maybe a millimetre. So I'm now going to top stitch it very, very close to the stitching that I've just done. So the stitching that I've done along here. So let's just get it going. That's it. So you don't want to be anywhere, anywhere near the metal parts of that zip. Do you remember? So keep to your stitching line because you know that's you know that's safe you know that's safe so as you come down okay you're coming down there with your with your tape and you can you don't have to have bias you can have just regular tape okay so I'll stop there so you can see that's what I've done I've just top stitched that on there I'm going to cut it about a half an inch away from the end of my pouch okay and we're going to just repeat this end what we did the other end we're just going to tuck that under so we're going to fold it under let me just do that because I know my hands are going to be in the way try and keep it straight that's not straight but assume it is so I've tucked the the end under and we're going to stitch that that's a bit better like that okay and you can use your scissors or your stiletto whatever you've got and that's it that's just push that off so I'm just going to readjust it make sure that's lined up and like I said before you're actually going to stitch this again 
not bad could be better so that's what it looks like okay that's all we've done we've just top stitched that edge if we turn it around that's what it looks like so see what I mean that just moved um, so let's just trim those threads so now what we're going to do we'll start from this end up here we're just going to fold that over and we're going to top stitch that on like that okay dead easy dead easy and you're going to follow your stitch line again when I say follow your stitch line you're going to be um, close to where you stitch so you only want a little a little seam here yeah I mean your, your bias will dictate to you when you fold it over the width the width of your bias so let's just zoom along and really it's as easy as that and it does make a difference so when you come to this end here can you see you're just going to fold that over and <clears throat> what you need to do is make sure that's tucked in and then fold it okay and if you've got a little bit of end sticking out there you can just poke that in okay just to spend a moment poking it in and then when you come to it <laughs> well I'll, when I get to it I'll poke it in um, go all the way along gone a bit wriggly there I'm sure you'll forgive me it's just sorry my hands are in the way there we go so all I've done is folded that end in be careful of your fingers a little back stitch to hold and there's our it's a little bit I went a little bit wriggly there but there's our binding done okay so you've got a lovely lovely neat edge okay now we'll quickly do the other side so the the, the pouch is finished <clears throat> so we're putting it over the top okay and then we're just folding it under so we're not opening up the bias in any way at all so catch it down just stitch all the way along be careful of the metal of your zip I mean my metal is lit can you see it's just there so I'm being very cautious not to go anywhere near and I'm half an inch away give it a little snip fold it under sorry my hands are in the way fold it under keep it there and like I say you might want to pin that you could even glue it and or tack it and it's a little bit wonky but I'm, I know you'll do better but I can just fold that in bring that over and start stitching that side there's always a way and and to be honest and there's not going to be many people that are going to look inside your pouch they might see they might see um, a little bit of your binding let me just get my pokey tool just to give that a shove that's it they might see a little bit of your binding when you open up your pouch but they're not going to open up and turn your pouch inside out are they and if they do they're not your friend can i just tell you that for nothing <laughs> so let's just take it all the way down so really it's you know it's quick to do it takes me a little while because i'm explaining everything and showing everything all the time but you should be able to easily make one of these in an hour well we have done haven't we so yeah so there we are let's just uh, have a quick a final look on the overhead so we've got a lovely binding in place makes such a huge difference now you will find with the binding that your corners aren't so easy to square up because you've got all that binding in there so you have to that's one of the um a thread that's perhaps one of the drawbacks of binding because you're putting an awful lot of fabric in a small area but you give it a good old poke with your pokey tool and do the best you can and i'm sure you will so let's and use a nice blunt end do not use anything sharp so really push it out put a bit of welly into it 
and give that a nice push. And you might be able to get your pokey tool into there and pull it out. A uh, pin wouldn't be strong enough, but your pokey tool might be, you know, your stiletto. If it's nice and sharp, just be careful you don't rip your fabric. <clears throat> there we are. So apart from a good press, that is our second magnolia made. So we've got access in there. Look at that gorgeous lining. Ah, zing, zing. You can just see your binding there, so you can hardly see anything. So you're not to worry. And then we've got a super pocket on the back that we can put our um, goodies in, whatever they might be. Maybe there's some sweeties going in there. And that, my dears, is Magnolia. So there's our other version. Oh, isn't that pretty? Isn't that lovely? And of course you could, if you wanted to, box the corners. I wouldn't do big boxes. In other words, half an inch and then your seam. But you could box the corners to make it sort of like that, that sort of shape. Um, or round them off to make a squovel. But yeah, there we are. Lovely. And do you see what I mean about that seam? You know it's there, but it's better than having two great big long pieces of binding, don't you think? Um, although if you use binding in the same fabric, that wouldn't be too bad. We've done that before. So I hope you enjoyed uh, watching that. Um, that is B4, which is the fourth Making It Monday project for 2023. And um, yeah, thoroughly enjoyed doing it. Next week, our Kath will be, I'm sure, cook cooking, no, sewing up a storm. Well, she can be cooking if she likes. She could make something for cooking. That would be good. And that would be our last Making It Monday project for January. And then we launch ourselves into February. February's theme is going to be um, pinks and reds and, and mauves. Odd combination, isn't it? Purples, but pinks, reds and purples. That's our colours for February. And uh, yeah, so there we are. Super duper. So that's three I've got now. <laughs> you know, like I need three. But there we are. It's what we do for you. Thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate your company. Oh, don't forget to go and get your um, Children in Need bear. Don't forget to download that pattern. I can't even begin to tell you how super cute February and March hugs are going to be, okay? They are super cute, but don't miss out on your collection. Get this one. The, um, the bags themselves are going to change slightly every month as well. So get yourself a basic tote bag pattern every month, different changes. So next month is different. March is going to be different. Uh, and the hugs inside are different as well. And they are super cute. I can't even begin to tell you. Well, I'm not going to tell you. But you can see them when they're launched. Is it next week? All right. Thank you very much. Um, time for nail colour change then. I know, Dawn, I know. The, the, the dramas we have to go through. I'll have to go, will I go reds or shall I go pinks? I could go this sort of um, fuchsia pink colour, this one here, couldn't I? Yeah, okay. Or perhaps purple, oh no. <laughs> right, thank you very much for watching. Really appreciate your company. See you again. I'll see our online sewing group members on Thursday. We've got our mid-month madness pattern with Kath. Oh, and you're going to love it. <laughs> you're going to love it. I'm going to see hundreds of these made. Right. I'll see you Thursday uh, in the group. 